mind. Your kids need to know without you ever saying it that the best part of your day is when they walk in the door from school. And I don't care what's going on. It doesn't make a difference if the sewage just backed up and there is human fecal matter floating across the floor. It doesn't make a difference. When your kids walk in, ho, 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 who just walked into the door? I don't, one second, who's just, Avraham? You just have to learn. Oz, oh my God, I'm so happy to see you today. How was school? That was for a 10 year old. The first one was for a six year old. That, that's just, just the way that it goes. Talking to them. And they have to know that at that moment, your life is completely put on pause. And you run over and you give them a hug and you pick them up and you laugh with them and you ask them, how was your day? And they don't want to talk about it and they don't want to tell you anything. And you're like, okay, okay, not to tell Abba. It's okay, it's okay. Did you beat up anybody today? Did you... And you just start making jokes with them. It's a happy home. Everything in the home is meant to feel so secure. So good, so alive. We try to leave their school and what happens over there outside as much as we can. You can ask them how their day was, but if it was a tough day, the same way you want to leave work. I'm at you come home, right? The husbands come home. And your wife was, so how was your day today? Like, uh, I just, <laughs> no, what? Like, just don't make me, just can't you just... This, this is how it was. That's it. That, it's all I can muster. Like, well, you could talk to people and you could talk on the phone. Right? Yes, yes, I could. Because those are all the things I have to do. And you don't have to tell me about my, your day. Oh, for the love of Fig Newton. <laughs> you know, you, you just, it, it's not that you don't want to talk about your day. It's simply that my day was my day. And that was my office, or that was the pharmacy, or that was the doctor's office, or that was me being a plumber and electrician. And that's an entire world that I would love to leave at the front door. And when I walk in, I just want a wife who's going to smile and say, supper's ready, it's been waiting for you. Come on in. And you come in and you sit down and the supper's ready. And she starts to give you your food. And you start to calm down. And you have a good cold drink. And then you just start to shift your weight a little bit. And you ask the kids, how was the day? And everybody's calm and everybody's happy. And then guess what happens, wives? The husband actually starts to talk about on his own what the day was like. From his own, he, without anybody prodding or pushing, the husband's like, so by the way, today, craziest thing happened. Some lady walked into the pharmacy. Now this lady comes in three times a week and she never has her insurance card, ever. And today she had her insurance card. So I was like, oh, Mazal Tov, your insurance card. Up until I looked at her name, and it wasn't her. This was her mother's insurance card. And she was, and, and your husband's going to start to have funny stories. Now, the reason why I bring this up, this is not Shalom Baya class, but honestly, men, you see that feeling that everybody would love to have when you walked in? Your kids want to have that too. So all because they're tiny whiny doesn't mean that they don't get the chance to have that. So when they walk in, and the first thing you do is just berate them. Ah, uh, what are you doing? D- who? A thousand times. Don't put your bag over there. What are you doing? Why can't you listen? Why can't you just listen? Okay, new. How was the test today? How? Hey, hey, hey! I was talking to you. How was your test? Can you imagine if you walked into your house after a long day of work, and your wife is like, "Are you kidding me? Are you kidding my face?" How many times did I tell you, don't put your shoes over there. Don't put your shoes over there. The maid just claimed. What are you doing? It's so hard. Walk your out. Send your shoes over there. And where did you put your coat this time? Are you kidding me? By the way, did you get the check yet that your boss said, oh my God, you didn't get it. You told me you're going to talk to him today. Right? Uh, you, just, you, you just want to take a tire iron. <laughs> and no, Chaz Rasham, right? Not to her face. To your own. He's just like, I just want to get this misery done with. <laughs> and that's what, so... Your children deserve the same treatment. A happy home means they walk into a home that's thrilled to see them. Hooray! You throw them up in the air. You must be starving. Have a treat ready for them. Have a treat. Have something. You give them the kids come home, they are ravaged. Women make the mistake to think, well, they ate lunch today. Uh, okay. You've never been hungry after having a soggy tuna fish sandwich? It's never happened? Is this something wondrous? What? After the soggy tuna fish sandwich, you, you still have mm, cravings for food? How could that be? 
He's coming into the house, the place where he's in a safe zone, where he can open up his refrigerator. See, he doesn't have a teacher saying to him, you can't open the refrigerator. You can't go to your bag. You can't open up your backpack right now. There's nobody who should be saying that. Now it's a safe haven. You know when your kid walks and opens up the fridge just to look? Oh, oh, hey, kiddo, what do you want to eat? It's just, he just wants to see that there's a world of options without a prison guard. Just, whoosh, yeah, how did you know? He just wants that feeling. And there's nothing wrong with that feeling. Happy in the home. So now you've got to work on it. We all have to work on ourselves. You've just experienced another Torah class brought to you by TorahAnytime.com.